everybody, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. I'm Kevin. And today's video is going to be a homeschool show and tell. The homeschool show and tell is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Arrest and myself. Each month we come together with a group of homeschoolers and we all share about a specific topic because we really wanted to show that there's not one right way to homeschool, that you can homeschool in many different ways. This month's topic is homeschool enrichment. Now we have shared a lot about our different homeschool enrichments in the past. We've talked about poetry tea time and nature study and game schooling, all of which I will either leave linked at the eye in the sky or in the description box down below for you to check out. So today, instead of talking about something we've already talked about, we asked Emily what her favorite part of homeschool was and she said STEAM. So I brought Kevin into this video because he actually does a STEAM lesson with her once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would talk to you guys about STEAM, what it is, why it's important in our homeschool, why we do it, how we do it, and a few of our favorite STEAM resources. But make sure you check out that link in the description box for the playlist to see everybody else's amazing homeschool enrichment videos this month because you're not gonna wanna miss them. First things first, what is STEAM? STEAM is an acronym that stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And the reason that I like incorporating it into our homeschool is because I feel like it brings in a lot of different concepts and skills, and it really allows for us to kind of go down those rabbit trails because there's so many different things that we can start off with, but what are some of the reasons that you think we incorporate it or why you like incorporating it? Well, there's quite a few. I mean, first and foremost, it's fun. Um, got to love the fun. But I find that it helps me get across to Emily some of the things that are more difficult to explain. Um, but it gets her focused in a new way. She gets to do the experiments hands-on, whatever we're doing. She's playing with it. Um, she's handling it. She's putting things together. Um, she's asking questions because of it. So it it just opens up a whole new world to her and it drives that that want to know so that she will continue to push forward ask more questions more in-depth questions and we get to have fun on the way the fun doesn't hurt right no i love the fun <laughs> okay so why when you decided that you were going to teach a class or teach a lesson once or twice a week why did you pick steam as the thing you were going to teach I don't, I really don't know why I picked it per se. At first, I was putting in my two cents. I wanted her to read a newspaper. I wanted her to know her measurements and understand that measurements are mathematical. They help in science and everything else. It helps in our art to mix our paints and stuff like that. But to explain it, to show her, I had to get her hands busy. I had to get her in there and understand that all these different things all tie together and that way she would understand the mathematics, measurements, um, temperatures. There's just, it goes on and on and on. So, and how it relates to all of and, them. And so I guess when I started, it was first, I was like talking to her. She was doing pretty much everything by herself and I was saying, can we do something with uh, the scale in the kitchen? Can we do something with uh, the tape measure? Can we do something with fractions and put it together in a package for Emily so that I was getting... Uh, more involved. Yeah, more involved. And then she's like, well, we have these boxes that we can order. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean boxes? She says, there's boxes out there, subscriptions you can get. And uh, it's whatever you're into, whether it's chemistry or physics or just about anything. And in, even just hobbies. Um, and she gave me the opportunity to look at them. We came up with a few different box ideas and ran with it. And Emily definitely picks out what she likes. Yeah. And so we made our decisions based on that. Um, some of them, directions are poor. That one's out. 
because if you can't read through it, it's not Ikea. It's some of them you need specific directions. <laughs> yeah, and we don't like Ikea steam nah. sets. Yeah. That's the Ikea is a stem for adults. I do <laughs> it really, it really is. So I think some of the ways that we incorporate steam into our homeschool, other than you teaching her once or twice a week, which mm -hmm. is obviously one of the most things she looks forward to the most. Like she loves that time with you. Um, is I like to strew things. I like to strew um, steam things because like he said, it gets her thinking. It kind of, I like to, it's like logical and critical thinking and it's mm -hmm. in depth and thinking outside the box. And so I like to strew tons of that kind of stuff, um, whether it's art books and art materials or whether it's, you know, just building materials. It can just be like her straws and connector set and, you know, like a prompt of some kind. Um, and if you are like, what in the heck is strewing, Jessica? I will leave a video up here and a link in the description box where you can get a free ebook because strewing seriously saved our homeschool morning sanity oh, um, by giving her something to do first thing in the morning and allowing us to become human since we're night owls and we don't. I think her people. creativity and her imagination actually took off more so from your strewing. It did because I, there's, it's very open ended. So yeah. I would strew like steam materials. Like I said, like a, just an, a random art book. And maybe today it was markers and paper or chalk pastels or multiple different kinds of mediums. And there's no rules or regulations. And I don't step in. I just let her do whatever mm -hmm. she wants. Um, and so it's, it really has, it, she's soared because the sky's the limit, yeah, right? There's, no there's nothing boxing her in. Um, or straws and connectors. I never even imagined that, I don't even think I have a picture of it anymore, but when we were doing space, I don't know, when she was five, mm -hmm. those straws and connectors, do you remember when she built a space rocket that she could actually get inside, In, of, inside of, out yeah. of straws and connectors? And I was like, I never would have imagined that we even had enough to do that with. So see, that was... See, in my day, we had to use the sticks as the... <laughs> as the and then cardboard boxes, wherever you could find them. So another way that I think that we really pushed her in the STEM direction was we built a center and took everything that we could think of that appealed to us, things that she was already into, and we put them in one spot with a table, did everything we could think to to provide her all the drawers filled with all of the goodies and, and, you, and you even attach Lego plates to the top of the yep. table, which we actually have a video tour of her STEM center. So I will link that up here in the eye in the sky for you guys as well. Um, but it really does give her a place when, when she's just kind of like, I'm not sure I'm bored. We're like, go do something in your STEM center. And she has Legos and straws and connectors. And I, I can't even think like the magnetiles and like every STEM medium you can possibly think of. And so we just encourage her to do that. And I think the best thing that you did for her, um, it's one thing to buy Lego and Lego kits, and they're amazing. The technology behind them is just mind-blowing. But they build them. Then what do you do with them? So she, <laughs> she has found a class Emily oh, participates man. in, and she actually destroys these kits that she's put together. And some of them are fabulous, but she'll tear them apart rebuild them and repurpose them so it's like even though you buy a lego set and it might be the three in one which is wonderful she can get more out of it through this class because yeah. she's taking it and it's interactive she's talking to other kids she's talking to the teacher and do you know just, what's even really i don't even think you realize do you know what's really cool about that class what's that do you know that she's bases the class off of passport to adventures Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they just finished. I think they're on Passport to More Adventures now. But each class is it's once a week, and each class is based off of the topic of one of the books. So they just did the Cobra, the Cobra book last week, right? She built a Cobra? Yep. Yeah, and so they just did the Cobra. she came to me and asked me, she goes, I really don't know too much about Cobras other than it's a snake. And so she's like, where are they found? So you break out the map. I showed her a pinpoint. This is where they're from. This is the region. Um, and then she's like, well, what else? And I said, well, you can involve temples. And so I just basically gave her a handful of ideas and I left the room. And she built, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And you know, that's one of those rabbit trails we were talking about, right? Where steam yeah. leads us down those rabbit trails yeah. all the time. 
So that's another one. Yeah, that's perfect. It's her Lego class. That's another way we incorporate it. Um, and then I think really we just try to encourage as much as possible. Like we don't have a set specific like on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday we do steam. We just constantly like you pick one or two days a week depending on our schedule and you sit down and do something with her. Um, we make sure she has her Lego class every week because it's something she really loves and it gives her tons of ideas because at the end of the class, the other kids share what they've built. And yep. so it, it's really encouraging. Um, and then I just strew with steam stuff all the time to make sure that she's um, involved and in being creative and open-minded and critical mm -hmm. thinking. So it's not like a set curriculum we use or a set anything. It's just all of the different ways that we incorporate it into our homeschool because it's important to us, right? Exactly. But, I mean, it plays into everything. If it's nothing more than building a kite and yeah. taking it outside and flying, but then you start talking about the aerodynamics and you're talking about lift and you're going on about this and that, and then that opens up the door into something else. So it's I think it's very important. Um, and then I have a mechanical background. I love to tinker. I was the kid that always tore something apart to see how it worked. Um, and she definitely gets that and from she, you. Yeah, I think she does, and yeah. I think that's pretty cool. And that way we can communicate. And then we get to building, we get to drawing and creating and crafting, and uh, you can't you can't put it into words. No, anymore. it's yeah, it's definitely something that y'all have in common. So we said we were going to share some resources with you guys. So do you want to go first and share? I just happen to have a whole stack of them. <laughs> Me too. Do you want to share some of the things that you and Emily most enjoy doing during your STEAM lessons? I would love to. Been waiting for this. <laughs> okay. So Legos. We already talked about them. This happens to be a three-in-one. Very inexpensive. And, it and the three-in-ones are our favorite. It is. And then she repurposes it all, all the time. So it's not like it's a waste of time or money. And I love them. I get to play with them too. So. Yeah. Uh, another one, the KiwiCo boxes. And I, your favorite of the KiwiCo line is? The Tinker Crates. The Tinker Crates. Yeah. yeah. They love the Tinker Crates. I actually let, I made the mistake of letting the subscription expire. And I didn't realize I had let it expire. A bad day in the house. And so we had gone like two months without one. I'm like, where, where are my crates? <laughs> What's going on? So, She's like, you like them? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I immediately fixed that and we have reestablished. The, they're, they're really cool. I mean. They really are. They, some of them will actually blow you away what they put in there and what you can do with them. And Emily is definitely jaw dropping every time one comes in. Yeah, she's like, she okay, loves we're the doing Tinker that. Crates. And so we kind of rotate. Um, another one, and this is a whole lot more, and it just, I don't know, I am so impressed. Mel Physics, Mel Chemistry, yeah. um, both of them, I can't say enough about them. And it's really nice, too, because not only do you have the box and you have the experiments, they have on the website where you can go in, download stuff, just little things you can do around the house by yourself without a box, without a bunch of... And don't in, most of the boxes even have a bonus? Oh, they, yeah. They'll, some of them have bonuses in it, um, but they give you all the bells and whistles, but like simple stuff. And I mean, you know what else is really cool, I what? think, about the Mel is... While you and Emily do these together, mm -hmm. and it's super fun, because of the way that they're video-based, mm -hmm. most older kids could actually probably do them by themselves. She, Emily has actually get, gotten yeah. to that point because we started out with the Tinker Crates, and she got her hands busy, 
and she understands the directions and she can read into the directions. And so then we got into the male physics and the male chemistry. Um, chemistry, we maintain a little more control on only because you dealing with fire, you're dealing with chemicals yeah. and you got your safety precautions stuff to deal with. But overall, a lot of it, she can perform the task by herself and she has her tablet up there and she runs through the experiment. But like I said, they have other things, little little things you can do on the side, which one is r really amazing where you can take a bowl of water and you take a leaf from outside and you put just a dab of dishwashing liquid on the end of the leaf, put it in the water, and it's like a little motorboat. It just takes off. You have to change the water each time you do it, but it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> You really like the I mouth. I enjoyed it. Yeah, those are probably one of your yeah. favorites, aren't they? And then another one is National Geographic's. But anything, any of their, like, any, we've yeah. bought every one that they make. Yeah, and every you've been time happy I see with a new one, I have to, even if it is the typical volcano, volcano one, you, or, we still bought it. Or elephant toothpaste or stuff. We always look for bigger and better because we want the ooey gooey splatters, the explosions, <laughs> the mess. Um, oh, you mean the one that literally like got on the all ceiling? Over the wall? It was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really do. Um, and so, yeah, if they have a box, we're, we're getting it. We're going to do it. Um, I've been to the library. We've been online. I've been to uh, all these. I've been everywhere. If Sam's, if I walk in and I'm looking around, that is I'm literally the one thing you look for everywhere every, we go. Everywhere we is go. some sort of science, art, Anything that we can get. Tinker yes. type box. Yes, we want did we everything from art to the messy e explosions of goo, um, whatever we can find. Um, we've done the lanterns and you light them and send them to the sky. And uh, then talked about everything from and, that. That yeah, was really I mean, cool. It just, if you, if you get the spark going, then you just ride the wave. But you got, if you get them to the point where they want to learn, they want to know, they want to dig they're in. They're having fun. They're having fun. They forget about how, you know, you're doing the math and you're doing the measurements and you're doing the paperwork. And doing the math is a big one for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotten so much better. It has. It has because we've yeah. made it more fun. Yeah. Okay. So I talked about strewing before too. So I actually pulled some of my favorite steam type stuff to strew to share with you guys. So the first simple thing that I have is just easy origami because that is like literally, you know, engineering and art. And, and I always wanted to do that when I was little. And it, and this one's easy. What's really cool um, for this, this is an Usborne one. I'll leave the links to everything we show you in the description box is it even has a QR code on the front where you can watch the videos for how to fold everything. So it's more than just a book with instructions. If you have a visual or auditory learner, that's really helpful. Right. Um, another thing that I really like are these never bored looks, never bored books, which are they're from board books. <laughs> they're bored, um, which is from Usborne as well. There's the original and then the never bored cut, fold and stick and the never bored outdoors. These were all things that I would strew and just leave it out and let her surprise me because there's tons of things that can be done within them. They've got probably over 40 or 50 different activities. Um, these steam ahead books, there's multiple in the series, but these are really fun too, um, because they're full of steam activities and there's like, this is outdoor, this is in the kitchen. There's others where, um, you can do things in other, you know, places and different things. But again, they have all these experiments. So sometimes I might leave it turned to a page and leave the materials out for it. Sometimes I'll just leave the book. Well, it just makes um, it easier so she doesn't have to search and yeah. stuff. And, and she sees that what she needs is right there. Exactly. So, like, yeah. for this, you know, I would leave some of the materials out for it. Different options for materials, like different colors and stuff. Or sometimes I'll just leave the book and just let her pick and surprise me and see what she comes up with. Um, these are brand new, and I haven't strewed these yet, but they're in my pile to strew soon because they're super. I don't think super. I've seen those either. I know. I'm hide I've been hiding them. I believe it. <laughs> these are the new kid engineering set from Usborne 2. That's why I haven't seen them. Thanks. <laughs> they are amazing. They Appreciate are. You getting those for me. You're welcome. Working with transport, working with materials, working with machines, working with energy working with computer and robotics and buildings and structures. And what's really cool is there's like 
information. Oh, you want to see them? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> there's them. like information. And then at the end of that information, there's a project. Like you're the engineer. Now you try it after you've learned about it. So it's like one or two pages of reading to learn and then a page to test something that you just learned about. And the experiments are really fun. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Like, look, don't you want to do that? Doesn't that look fun? I, I, I will, I will do <laughs> you will that. do that. I, I know. Will do that. So those are things that I would leave out, again, sometimes with the material, sometimes with nothing, and just let her surprise me to see what she comes up with. And then probably the thing that I've strewed the most yep. that we – all love yep. and we end up taking turns with when they're out are all, all of these all of these are all the think fun single player logic games that are steam based so this is laser maze mm -hmm. and then we have circuit maze we have and her critical thinking is, is a is ton unreal. gravity maze and what's even more is that then she'll come up like with her own too yeah this is really yeah. cool and then my personal favorite is roller coaster the roller coaster okay. challenge. So what's really awesome about these Think Fun single player games is that they have 40 to 60, depending on which game you have, like 40 for the roller coaster and then 60 for most of the mazes, um, challenge cards. And those range from easy to expert or super difficult. So we can all literally try one at the level that we're at and you can work up. And I remember when Emily would get frustrated with the easy and now she's mm -hmm. like challenging herself to do the hard, which mm -hmm. is really cool watching that progression. Um, and like I said, when one of these gets strewed, it's one of those things that's like she does it and then it stays out and then I do it and then Kevin does it and we like challenge each other to try to do a higher level. Yep. So that's really fun. And then sometimes you'll pull them out if they have to do with a lesson that you're learning about. Like you yes. learned about circuits and pulled circuit maze out and challenged each other to well, do she it. She does really well. We, we, uh, we built a, um, a lemon clock. Mm. We built a battery um, we use lemon juice and the cardboard and the metal plates and you actually put it together and it stores up to I mean it's not a, a lot of juice but it stores up enough to be able to run a light um, so she built a battery by mm -hmm. hand um, there's just it's endless it's so endless. much yes yeah these are like a fraction of what we even have. Mm -hmm. And so we just tried to pick some of our favorites to share with you so that if you were looking to add some extra steam to your homeschool or just some fun, I mean, you could, you can involve dad like we did. I mean, we are lucky enough to have Kevin home with us so that he can do it during the week, but this could just be like a weekend thing. I have a homeschool mom friend who does what they call dadder days, which I think is the cutest well, thing cute. ever. Um, and their dad does something with them every Saturday. So this could just be something like you could get a subscription to one of these and have steam Saturdays with dad, or you could just have steam summer and spend the summer doing steam and you would still be reading because you'd be reading the instructions and doing math and tinkering and engineering and I mean it would be so much fun just to add any of these things that we suggested to your homeschool so they're just a few of our favorites and some of the ways that we try to incorporate one of what we find to be the most beneficial and important I guess subjects if you will into our homeschool yeah, so never ignore them when you go to Ollie's and you go to Sam's. <laughs> when they're, yeah, because they normally have them at a lower they, price. I'll, they I'll, do. I like them. And yeah, you I'll, do. I'll dig through the piles till I find what I want. He really will. I always go, do we have that one? She goes, yep. <laughs> he gets one? mad like he wants to buy a second one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Sometimes if they're cheap enough, we do buy a second one. So if it's Sometimes, one that we yeah, know that yeah, you liked. Yeah. Okay, so now we would love it if you would tell us in the comments down below. Do you incorporate STEAM into your homeschool? And if so, how do you incorporate it? And if you have any really awesome STEAM suggestions, I'll take Kevin them. will take all of them. I need all the help I can get. Because <laughs> he loves doing it with her. Yeah. So if you have any awesome suggestions for him, please let us know. And again, don't forget to check out that playlist to see all of the other videos that are going to be talking about how they do homeschool enrichment in their homeschool.